I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about integration by parts. In problem number 25, I'd like to evaluate the integral of e to the minus x sine of 4x dx. All right, so if we're going to integrate this uh, using integration by parts, then I need to start out by choosing a u and a dv. And again, typically what I want to do is I want to choose a u that I can take the derivative of, choose a dv that I can take an antiderivative of. Actually, in this case, either one works just fine. I can take the derivative of both of those things, I can take the antiderivative of both of those things. So it's really my choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's let u be e to the negative x, and dv will be my sine of 4x dx. So u, du, the derivative of u, will be negative e to the negative x dx, and v will be the antiderivative of sine of 4x, which is uh, negative cosine of 4x divided by 4. <coughs> okay. So we've got our u, our dv, our du, and our v, and now we can rewrite this thing using integration by parts. So what we get is we get that this should be equal to u times v. So we get negative e to the minus x times cosine of 4x over 4 minus the integral of v du. Now, uh, notice here I've got a lot of negatives going on. So be a little bit careful. I've got a negative here and I've got a negative here which gives me a positive. So what's inside will be positive. So let's just write it in that way. Uh, so I've got an e to the negative x, e to the negative x times cosine of 4x over 4. All right, so I've got cosine of 4x over 4 dx. All right, so I've rewritten this thing using integration by parts, and I've got this uh, over 4 out here. I think that that would be much better for me if it were out here in front of the integral. Uh, and then I get something that looks sort of like what I started with. So let me rewrite this one more time. Uh, so I'll write it this way. I've got this one-fourth I'm just going to put out in front. So I have minus one-fourth e to the minus x cosine of 4x <clears throat> minus, I'll bring the one-fourth out, and then I have integral of e to the minus x cosine of 4x dx. So now, to finish this problem off, I need to integrate e to the negative x cosine of 4x dx. And you might be saying, well that looks a lot like what you started with, except there's a cosine instead of a sine. And it's true. And so we need to use integration by parts again on this guy. So let's do it. So look at this guy. I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, I've got a u, and my u is going to be e to the negative x, and my dv is going to be the rest of the stuff, which is cosine of 4x dx. The derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the minus x dx and the antiderivative of cosine of 4x is sine of 4x divided by 4. All right, so now we're ready to rewrite the integral that's sitting right here. All this other stuff is still there. I'm just rewriting that integral, so let's be careful here. So I'll start right here. So I'm moving this up here. So I start with negative 1 fourth negative one-fourth 
e to the negative x cosine of 4x. e to the negative x cosine 4x <coughs> minus a fourth, minus one fourth. And now I'm going to replace this integral using integration by parts. So what I want to do is let's put a parenthesis to make sure I don't mess up on my dis distribution of this minus one fourth. And then I put u times v, which is e to the negative x times sine of four x over four, or I could write that as one fourth uh, e to the minus x times sine of four x minus integral of v du. Now, we need to be careful with our negatives again. I have a negative here, and so I've got one negative inside. Then I have e to the negative x, e to the negative x. Uh, I've got this sine of four x over four. Okay, so I'm gonna write it this way, sine of four x dx, and the over four, I'm gonna write out in front of the integral. All right, so I'm putting the one fourth out in front. It could be inside, I just moved it out. Okay, let's rewrite this thing. So I still have this guy, minus one fourth, e to the negative x cosine of four x. Now, <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could multiply through by this negative one fourth. If I do, I get minus 1 16th e to the negative x sine of 4x. And then I multiply through by the negative 1 4th times a negative 1 4th is a positive 1 16th. But then I've got this additional negative I pull out. So a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And then what's uh, the coefficient? It's negative a fourth times a fourth, that's a sixteenth. So I've got negative one sixteenth integral of e to the minus x sine of four x dx. But if you'll notice, this integral is exactly what I started with. That is the integral that I started with. And at first, this is kind of alarming. It's kind of like, now wait a second, I, that's what I started with. How, how did I get from there back to itself again? So now we're going to use a little trick. And that is that we realize that this thing is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this. So if this integral is equal to this expression, then I could add 1 16th of this integral to the other side, to this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1 16th integral of e to the minus x sine of 4x dx and add it to one of those integrals. So what I get is that uh, 1 plus 1 16th is 17 sixteenths integral of e to the minus x sine of x, I'm sorry, sine of 4x dx must be equal to this guy, negative 1 fourth e to the negative x cosine of 4x minus this guy, which is minus 1 16th, e to the negative x sine of 4x, well, plus a constant. So now if I just multiply both sides by 16 over 17, I get my integral. So let's multiply both sides by 16 over 17. If I do, I get that the integral of e to the minus x sine of 4x dx is equal to, multiply both sides by 16 over 17, and this 16 over 4 is 4, so I get minus 4 over 17 
times e to the minus x cosine of 4x. If I multiply this guy by 16 over 17, the 16 cancel, and I get minus 1 over 17 <coughs> times e to the minus x sine of 4x plus a constant. And that is our answer. Now, the most difficult part of this problem is when we have to recognize that this is the exact integral that I started with. So I should take this entire term and add it to the other side of the equation. Okay, so I took this and added it to the beginning of the problem. And that's how I got 17 sixteenths. Notice that this is one of these or that this is 16 sixteenths of these. Okay, so if this is 16 sixteenths of these integrals and I add another 1 sixteenth of that integral, then I get 17 sixteenths of that integral. That's how I am able to write this next line. And then I just have to multiply both sides by 16 over 17 to get my answer. And we're done.